Good morning. Welcome to episode 23 of Deborah Quilts Lots and Knits Bits. I'm Deborah McCracken and I quilt a lot and I knit a little bit. So today is Wednesday, February 3rd, 2021. So being February 3rd, it's actually the day of birthdays. So I'd like to extend a happy birthday to Heather. Happy birthday, Tana. Happy birthday, Wendy. And happy birthday to all the other people that are having birthdays today. I believe there's probably more than three, but I know three or four. I can't remember who the fourth one is, but um, anyway, it's a good day to have a birthday. I'm coming to you from beautiful Penticton, British Columbia, Canada. Uh, we are having sunshine and warmth again today. Um, we have knock on wood had the mildest winter we've ever had since I've been here in six years. So that's awesome. I'm pretty happy about that. So is my husband. We've had very little snow. We had more snow in October than we've had in January, which is okay. It's all right with me. So what has everybody been working on? I have a few knitting projects on the go. And as it turns out, they all end up to be dependent on one getting finished before the other one can go too far. So I'll just jump right into that. Um, I've been working on this Playdate cardigan by Tin Can Knits for my daughter. And I am on the, what should have been the button band, but I'm actually adding a twisted rib fisherman's knit. Oh, there's my mistake. That's the only mistake I made. Fisherman's rib, um, kind of a shawl collar kind of thing. Uh, I I did one on my Pure Comfort cardigan, which is right here. Um, last year, and I just loved the the look of it and. Um, I thought it might look nice on this Playdate cardigan and I was a little bit concerned because the neckline on the cardigan is really a, quite a V. Um, it's by Tin Can Nets. I don't know if I mentioned that or not. I made one for little Emma. And uh, when you buy the pattern you get from newborn all the way up to adult extra extra. I think it's a 4XL sizing. So, and they're fun to knit and they're quick and well, if anybody else is doing them, they're quite a quick knit. But anyway, I decided I wanted to put this shawl collar on the cardigan, hoping that that would be um, just a little more comfortable. So I'm past the point where it, uh, I'm up to about halfway around the back of the neck. So, and my mistake. Um, so, uh, the front of it looks okay when I put my arms through the sleeves. So I'm kind of, kind of hoping. So what I'm using for that is the um, Cascade Heritage Sock Yarn. I got this from the Bees Knees back in August and I put together a wool and honey sweater out of it and then I didn't like how it looked and I kept making mistakes and um, so I ripped it out and started a cardigan instead. So anyway, I've been make. I'm now, I'm working on this Positive Vibrations shawl. Doesn't that look cool? I just really like the shapes and um, it looks like a lot of fun. So it's by Marinja Knits, Marin Melkor. She's the same person that designed the Butterfly Papillon shawl. So I'm gonna make another one of these eventually, but um, when I made this, I ordered an extra skein of the variegated yarn, and it's the Earth Unique Earth Yarn 
color 3002. So you have part of the ball that looks like this and part of the ball that looks like this. So you can see the center gets that goldy green. So anyway, I just love these colors. Like I said, I was going to make another butterfly, but I saw this and I have to do it. So I, I tried a combination um, with another variegated yarn and that one, and it wasn't thrilling me. So I thought, oh, I'm not going to spend all this time working on it and have uh, something I don't like. So I started with the Cascade Heritage Sock Yarn just to see what it would look like because with knitting you can always take it apart and do it something else. So I'm actually loving the way this works up and as you can see it's going from gold and there's it gets greeny over here. So that's the first set of um, short rows to make the I've been calling them blurbs of color. So I'm very excited to see how that works out. You see my little stitch marker there? I got a set of these for Christmas. They're chakra stitch markers, they're called. Um, and they're from the Bee's Knees. And it came in this little kit. And there's um, two stitch markers for every chakra, I think. Anyway, they're quite pretty. Oh no, fun to use. Nice, nice to have stitch markers. So in the meantime, I started this other one. Which is in the yarn bowl I also got for Christmas, which looks kind of messy right now, but it's because I stuffed everything back in here. Anyway, I started with this other yarn and it just wasn't like this is the second um, bit of blurbs and I was just like, oh, that's not what I hoped for. Anyway, the design, I put a picture on the Facebook group and the designer said, you know, sometimes those come out the prettiest, so just don't give up on it. So. My little um, kit that I have uh, interchangeable needles. I just put stoppers on this cable and I will um, keep working on it. And this yarn is Ra Grapes of Wrath from K Zip Knits, um, along with the Grinch Slipper. glow stick. These are on her Garibaldi soft base, which is super ash merino and nylon blend. It's very nice to work with. It's got some squishiness to it that I really, really like. And then this variegated one is a limited edition called Nebula. And the limited edition came in a her galaxy mystery box. So being that I have promised myself I'm not going to go buy a bunch of random yarn uh, without having a project to do because I don't want to end up with a whole bunch of uh, unfinished things like I have with quilting. I wasn't, I wasn't going to buy anything unless I had a project for it. Anyway, Kelsey from KZIP Knits had this picture up of a galaxy. And she said, Galaxy Mystery Box available now, limited. And I don't know, I just jumped on it. And I ordered the box, which came with this yarn and a 25 gram mini, um, which I'm sorry, I left it upstairs. Uh, it's a collaboration between Case of Knits and Puzzle Tree Yarns, two dyers from Vancouver. And the, um, the other one, so it's meant to be a sock set. So you um, do your heels, toes, and cuffs out of the one that came from Puzzle Tree. And I believe it was called Nightshade or something like that. It's grays and blacks and 
it's really pretty. And then you do your main stock out of the nebula. Anyway, I will keep going with this shawl and see how it looks. And worst case scenario, I end up with some socks and that's okay too. Anyway, the Galaxy Box, she called it, uh, came with some goodies. So you knew you were getting yarn, but then there were mystery goodies because it was a mystery box. So the other goodies that I got were some stitch markers for the Galaxy theme. And they're just quite fun. And then there was a recipe for cookies and a cookie cutter in the shape of a star and some uh, silver sanding sugar so you could make your star cookies sparkle. I have to say I've made the cookies twice now and they are very yummy. They taste like shortbread and um, and cutting them out. I've haven't done cookie cutter cutter cookies since making gingerbread man I'm sure when my daughter was little but anyway, I'm having fun with these and uh, yeah every every week or so I <laughs> batch cookies <sighs> which probably isn't the best thing if you're trying to get into you know your New Year's body which yeah, hasn't happened yet and 57 years later, it's probably not going to happen. Anyway, I do try to, I, since before Christmas, I've been trying to not snack every time I go upstairs. I've been trying to just limit myself to breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And so far, I don't know. I don't know if it's working. I haven't stepped on the scale. Anyway, I digress. So I have to finish my sweater if I want to use this yarn to finish my shawl. So that's that's the main goal right now is I'm we're working on that sweater. Um, on my in my morning podcast uh, watching vlog YouTube while I'm having my coffee um, there I watch Pat Sloan she's a quilter who does a video every day and she um, schedules things so she does one block for this quilt a week and then she's got sets goals like okay I need to do this many blocks by this time to get this quilt done by this date and that kind of thing so um, and another one Karen Brown Karen Brown of just get it done quilt she talks about setting a timer and just doing like this for 15 minutes or half an hour and so I am you know spending at least 20 minutes every morning while I'm having my coffee and watching knitting and quilting videos on YouTube with my sweater and hopefully it'll get done pretty soon and then I can continue on with my shawl which was meant to be evening knitting um, but I'm gonna keep working on the sweater because it'll be done soon I have knit a few other things I knit some socks for my brother's Day, and I'll put a picture of them somewhere here and um, I use the day off sock pattern it's a toe up and I can do it two at a time and it's pretty easy to follow along um, the pattern itself is is a download free download on Ravelry and it has a short cuff on it so he wanted sh socks that weren't gonna fall off so I made a quite a long cuff in two by two rib so those are gonna stay up they're not going anywhere and I hope that they're not too tight but they might be we'll see um, 
And the other thing I knit was um, some little gnome hats. I showed it a little while ago, and I'll put a link to the pattern down below. Another free download. Um, and I made them out of a superwash merino DK that uh, from Estelle, I believe, that I got at the Bee's Knees in three different colors, and uh, they turned out really cute. And I put some little labels on them that said "Nanimated," and that was uh, a, a gift from my friend Michelle at Christmas. So thank you. Um, and then uh, I made those for my husband's granddaughters. They're going to be four next week. So I was at Poppins yesterday and I found this sparkly ballerina fabric. And so I made pillowcases for them. And I used the lettering function on my sewing machine, which I never use. Uh, I think I've used it like maybe three times in its whole lifetime. And I put their names on the end of the pillowcase. And I thought that was fun. And my husband was just like, oh, these are awesome. And I was like, oh, good. I hope I hope the girls think they're awesome. They're, they were fun for me to make. So um, I hope that that does the trick. So I'll put a picture of the little gnome hats and the pillowcases up, up here too. And just before I go on to quilty, fabricy things, um, I'll talk about this again. This is my Papillon butterfly shawl. And you've seen this before. I finished it, I think, last year about this time. Maybe the year before. I don't know. Anyway, I've taken it a lot of places and it's quite comfortable. And this sweater is called the Column T. And uh, it has this little lace across the front. And then there's a little lace uh, feature on the hem. And there, it's, it's knit in the round, but there are a few little stitches that you do um, on the sides to make it look like it's seamed and it's made out of the hemp yarn um, that I got at Fiberphilia Fest the first time I went um, but I saw the sweater on the Wet Coast Wools podcast and I thought oh I really like that I need one of those and um, I'm, I'm gonna make a few more because they're very comfortable and they look nice I've had a lot of compliments on this and um, one lady said, well, where did you get your sweater? I said, oh, I made it. <gasps> you made it? Oh my God. So, I mean, that was, that's cool. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna make a few more and it's like, you know, made out of a, a like a cotton, cottony kind of cellulose yarn. And I see the Bees Knees has some very cool new yarns out there and lots of cotton linen blends, and there's a cotton linen silk, I think. And you know, I remember when I was a teenager, um, I had a, a a sweater that I purchased that was cotton and silk, and it was so comfortable to wear. I wore that thing out. Like, honestly, I think, you know, after six or seven years, it was starting to show some somewhere in the spots like under you know under the arms and stuff like that so anyway I'm, it would never fit me now but that's that's that so I have been busy doing a lot a lot a lot of quilting uh, I went to Poppins yesterday um, my brother phoned me the other day and he needed some new masks made with because I made him some um, with cars on them. So uh, he said, well, the elastics are finally, they're starting to, to tear off. And I'm like, oh, okay. So uh, now masks are recommended that you have three layers. So I went to Poppins yesterday and got this uh, 
polypropylene stuff that um, makes up for the third layer, which is awesome and was super easy to put into the pleated mask that, um, that I've been making. And um, doesn't like hot iron so much, but just, you know, you just can't leave it on there for too long. Um, so I had to go to Poppins yesterday because I needed backings for this quilt. There's actually two of these quilts. They're not exactly this, well, they're the same pattern and the same fabrics, but not everything's in the same order. So anyway, I um, had a lady phone me in December matter and she had been into poppins into the quilt store and she didn't quilt so she had um she was looking around and the quilt that i quilted for poppins uh for their kit was on the table and she's like oh i really love this quilt can i buy it and they said well no it's kind of a sample for our 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 um, kit she was oh okay and I don't sew is there somebody who would make me one this of course Deborah would make you one so she phoned me she said will you make me um, these quilts for these purposes and I'm going to donate them and I want to remain anonymous I'm like okay yeah no problem and um, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail about what they're for or where they're going they're just really pretty quilts and um, I got the last two kits that Poppin had, Poppins had, but I mean, if you called them and said, I want one of those, they would put together 14 fat quarters and a little bit of um, contrast for you. They have the patterns in stock. It's called the Crossroads pattern by Running Doe, Running Doe Quilts. And um, the original quilt was 60 by 75. And I needed to make it narrower and longer for its purpose. And so I did some calculations and um, instead of a finished eight inch block, I did a finished six inch block and was able to um, go from there. However, when I took the finished measurement and divided it by a number to make to figure out how many rows I'd need I divided it by eight instead of six and uh, so Saturday morning I was all finished getting the pieces put together I have quilt tops completed and I took my measuring tape out what this doesn't come out to what it needs to be so anyway I was three rows short and I had enough fabric in the kits that I got from Poppins to make up almost, I needed 27 rows for each, or 27 blocks for each quilt. And I had enough that I was only short 21 out of now 54 uh, blocks that I needed. So I managed to scoop those out of my stash, which was not a big stretch at all. And, uh, so I didn't get the quilts done for Saturday to go and get the backings on Saturday, which, so I had to wait till Tuesday, which is just fine. So I went down yesterday and I got the backings for this one and it's, and it's twin and uh, I'll get those done and sent off um, this week. Ta-da! And I really, truly, I could have, there's a ton of this uh, navy left and I could have, in theory, used that for part of the binding and use the binding fabric for uh, the blocks. Um, but anyway, that's, that's the way it goes. I miscalculated and saved it. And excuse me, if you know me, you know that's not uncommon, unusual, or surprising. So, um, another, th I've just been, I had quilts picked up this week. Um, Joanne picked up her quilt on Monday 
and she had brought me this quilt. Um, it was just a little wall hanging. It was a reverse applique stained glass um, number that she started when her son was a toddler. And through a bunch of things that happen, you she it got packed up and moved and moved and moved and now she's moved again in the last little while and uh, was unpacking boxes and found it and went to Poppins and they said oh Deborah can do that and uh, so she brought it to me and I finished her 20 year old UFO and um, it was when she took it home it was ready to hang on the wall I did the facing I did a facing on it put a sleeve on it the whole bit. She goes, oh, I wish I could hug you. I'm like, oh, you know, that's what I miss the most is having the completed quilt hugs. So anyway, that day will come again soon, I'm sure. Um, so and then I've just been working hard. I got lots going on. So check out the, the uh, quilts on the Deborah Quilt Slots. Facebook page and that tells you exactly what I've been working on and um, there was a, there's a quilt that's being shipped home today so I won't put pictures on there until its maker receives it um, but you know I've been doing a, a few custom quilts lately so if it seems like I'm not quilting as much as I uh, usually am it's because I've been working on the same one for quite a bit longer than I usually do, which is just fine too. It's quite rewarding to get one of those done and have it kind of stitched to death and standing up on its own. Anyway, I've got a couple more to do. I'm very excited. And I've got tons and tons of other ones to do. And I am still enjoying my quilting. 15 and a half years after getting started uh, as a long arm quilter or quilting for other people. It's just great. And how many people can say after that long that they still enjoy their job tremendously? I'm very fortunate. So I will leave it at that. I want to say happy knitting, happy quilting, happy making at whatever you do that makes you happy. Enjoy the sunshine and uh, enjoy this time at home to complete some things that we wouldn't otherwise have the time to do. And we'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, like my video, put a little comment down below, um, whatever it is. I'm up to 57 subscribers as of this morning. Thank you, Carol. And, um, you know, when I started this two years ago, I was really just trying to um, be accountable to somebody else for my UFOs, which I have I finished one of them since I started, um, I think one or two. Anyway, um, but, you know, I told my daughter, I said, oh, yeah, I'm going to get like 30 subscribers. And now I'm almost twice that, which, you know, isn't much when you look at some of these channels that have. 10,000 subscribers or a million views, but you know what? It's pretty good for me and I, I'm thrilled. So thanks so much for watching and we'll talk to you when I get something else finished. So take care.